of course, when they work next things, but this time it's what next, my next chapter. Somebody say, what next? My next chapter. Say it again, everybody in unison. What next? My next chapter. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey, what next? And answer back and say, my next chapter. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What next? My next chapter. I was reading a story about two months ago in 1737. A cargo of slaves left the Ivory Coast, my other country, heading, of course, to the United States. It was a British cargo. And uh, as they're navigating on the Atlantic, a storm rose, a strong, powerful uh, storm. And so the navigators decided we can't make it going this way. We're going to shift toward the Indian Ocean. So they begin to go along the coast from Kenya, Madagascar. And the storm was so powerful, it cut them up and wrecked the boat. So the slave actually swam because the slave from the Ivory Coast know how to swim. We have the Atlantic Ocean. Most of them knew how to navigate swimming in the waters. And they get to the island that's called the Seychelles Islands that's not, not far from Madagascar in the Indian Oceans. And they liberated. When I read that story, I feel like, wow, this is amazing. It was because of a storm that the boat wrecked and brought forth their freedom. I will repeat that again. It was because a storm came along, break their boat, and their security and freedom was assured. You know, sometimes we go through some storm and we wonder the storm is there to kill me because everything is wrecking down to pieces. Maybe that storm was the opportunity that you waited for to bring your liberation and your freedom. Tell your neighbor, that storm won't kill you. It will liberate you. Turn to the other neighbor. The other one did not listen. Tell the other neighbor, this storm, no, 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 look at that. This storm you are going through, it will wreck the boat, but it cannot wreck your life. It will not wreck your life. It's for your liberation. Hallelujah, somebody. Let's read a portion of scriptures. Acts chapter 27 quickly. Verse 24, I have a line up of them. We're going to read them through. And then we're going to begin to take them down point by point. And say, do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of of all who sail with you. Next. So keep up your courage. Paul is speaking now to the men on the boat. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as... Can we say that again? It will happen just as... It will happen just as... Next. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some islands. On the 14th night, no, don't project me that. I have my list of, uh, just for time's sake, all right? Uh, I gave you my verses. Just put it on. Acts chapter 27, verse 22. Let's go back. Just follow that list. I don't want the whole chapters. If not, we'll stay here till morning. <laughs> Acts chapter 27, I have a list of verses, just one after the other. Verse 22, let's go. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Next. Only the ship will be destroyed. Go to verse 24 again, and then I will follow up with it. And Paul said, the angel said to Paul, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the life of all who sail with you. Next. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told you. Okay, keep on, keep on. But the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump abroad first and get to land. 
The rest were to get there on planks. Somebody say planks. And on other pieces, some of these other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. Hallelujah. Somebody say, in this way, everyone reached land safely. I don't know which way God going to use, but I want to give you an assurance. Regardless of the way, you will reach safely land. Hallelujah. This is the story of Paul, of course, being incarcerated as a prisoner. Put with other prisoners. They are putting them in the boat. They are bringing them to Rome. Paul has an appointment with the king in Rome to testify, even though he was a prisoner. Now, Paul tells them, hey, boys, this might not be the time to get in this boat because God showed me there will be a storm along the way. They didn't listen to Paul. They still went in the boat. The storm began to move the boats. Everything went crazy. Panic on board. Fear on board. Worries on board. They were all convinced that no one will make it out of here. At night, an angel showed up to Paul and said, Pablo, don't worry. The boat will be destroyed. But everyone will make it safe to land. So Paul woke up in the midst of the people who were panicking. And he said, hey guys, cool down. Take courage. Last night, an angel spoke to me, and he said, we might lose the whole boat, but everybody here, you will make it safe on board. And we know the story went on. The navigators used their skills, throwing the anchors, cut the anchor, throw the extra out of the water just to stabilize the boat. It didn't work. The boat had to be destroyed. That's not the way it go. The angel said, everybody will make it safe, but no guarantee for the boat. And so when the boat is being destroyed, the centurion stood up and said, hey, everyone among you who know how to swim, jump now in the water. And the swimmers jump in the water. Do I have some swimmers here? I'm not talking about swimming in real life. I'm talking about swimming in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about being able to swim out of any situation. I'm talking about your boat is going down and you are using your swimming skill to make it on the other side. Somebody go this way. I am a swimmer. He said the swimmer first jump out and the swimmer jump out and the other person, oh, what about us? Our parents did not take us to swimming classes when we were eight years old. And I didn't grow up in the Ivory Coast. I grew up in the desert. There is no river there. I never learned to swim. So what about us? The angels say we're all going to be fine. The swimmers are going. What about us? He said, hey, pick up any piece you find in the boat. As long as it can float, it will float you out on the other side. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody? Tell your neighbor, I don't care I'm going to get there, but I will get there. Swimming or floating, I don't know. But the word of the Lord said, Everyone will make it on the other side. Hallelujah. We will make it on the other side. Point number one. It is amazing that Paul is on a mission to go to Rome on a divine assignment, but yet a storm came along the way. We could believe it and we can think very easily that as long as I'm doing God's will, no storm. Everything will be smooth. Everything will be flowing. I have a good news for you. Paul was on a divine assignment to go to Rome, but yet the storm did not have a respect for the assignment. The storm still rose regardless if it was God or not God. Listen, you can be going in the right path and encounter obstacles. Don't look at obstacles to feel like you are missing God's plan or you are disobedient. God wants me to tell you, the storm in which you are going is not because you didn't pray enough. It's not because you are disobedient. It's not because you are doing wrong. It's because it's a sign and the proof might be that you are on the way to do God's will. Somebody say, I hear you. Everybody shout, I hear you. I am on the way and the proof is, look at what I'm encountering. What I'm encountering does not show me that it's not God's way. On the contrary, it gives me the assurance. It is the evidence that God really called me. It is the evidence that I'm really going to the place where God wants me to go. Don't be afraid of a storm. If it rose up to wreck your boat, God will not allow the storm to wreck your life. Your life shall be saved. Somebody say, I hear you. 
because it's easy to give up on divine projects because of the challenges and the obstacles and the adversities. Oh, if it was God, why would I have failed? Why did this storm come away? If it was God, it's not that what Pastor Julia was saying. If it is God, why did this not happen? Listen to me. Sometimes obstacles are evidences that you're walking in God's way. Did you hear me? Jesus said, let us go on the other side and the storm arose. Do you think Jesus missed it? He said, let us go to the other side and the storm came along. What is this, Jesus? You tell us to go to the other side and then the storm come. What is the storm doing on the way? I am doing God's will. It should be smooth. It should be flowing. No. That's not the ways of God. So your challenges and your obstacles sometimes can be the evidence that you're doing the right thing. Somebody say, you are talking to me. Don't give up because of a storm. Number two, the Bible said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. In other words, no matter how high the tides of the storm are, you will make it. Amen. This man is weak. Amen. God is saying, no matter if it turns into a desert, no matter if it's turning into a flood, no matter if it turns into a storm, because I say you will make it on the other side. You are going to make it on the other side. You will stand before Rome in a way or another. It doesn't matter how many storms will come your way. It doesn't matter how big the storms are that come your way. It doesn't matter the opposition and the adversity. The word of the Lord said you will make it on the other side. You will make it to Rome. You will make it to your place of celebration. You will make it to your place of elevation. You will make it to the place of success. Regardless of the storm, don't give up. You will make it. Turn to two people and say, guess what? You will make it. Please, stand up and tell to two people, guess what? You will make it. Even if it's your husband or your wife, turn to and say, you will make it. Stand up, tell to two, three people, you will make it. Yeah, you will make it. You are making it. The Lord said we're going to get to Rome. We're going to get to Rome. Somebody's making for his marriage. Somebody's making for his wedding. Somebody's making for his new job. Somebody's making for his celebration. Somebody's making for his success. Somebody's making it. You are making it. You're going to make it. Regardless of the tide, we are going to make it. Cross point, we are going to make it. Mandala badaga yabada yalabaya. We are making it. We are going to Rome. The king is waiting for us in Rome. Sit down. We are making it in Rome. We are making it. And I like what the word said. He said, God has granted you all those who are sailing with you. Tell your neighbor, because you are in my boat, you're going to make it. The angel said to Paul, Paul, you are making it and anybody who's with you. You know, a few years ago, I was in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm flying out of Las Vegas. I didn't go play, play uh, stuff. <laughs> I went there for electronic show. I'm, I'm flying out of Las Vegas, coming to Calgary. Getting this plane, you know, the people were coming from Las Vegas. They're either sad or happy. Depend if you win or they lose. You understand? This woman, she has gold everywhere. Gold. Very dignified. Powerful. And when she walks, you can tell something is happening. Everybody's turning to look at her and she's passed. She sat down like that. Gold everywhere. Makeup, hair, like this. She looks rich. Filthy rich. Powerful woman. You are really afraid to say hello. <laughs> and I come and she's, I'm sitting by her. She's by the window. I'm in the aisle. And I say, hello, ma'am. Oh, she look at this little skinny guy like this. She turned the other side like that. And <laughs> she turned her head over. feel like, what the heck? <laughs> Don't think because I'm sitting by you, we are the same, all right? She feel like, this by accident, I'm... Uh, right? You are sitting by me. You should be happy. She ignored me. I tried to have a conversation. She, she literally cut me off. 
Then the plane take off. <laughs> Ten minutes in the flight. I never feel any turbulence like that. The plane dropped three, four feet. Bah! Boom, 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 boom. Oh! She is afraid of flying. You know what she did? We are in church, but we need to be truthful. She took my hand and put on her breast. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, she was so scared, she took my hand and put on her breast. I'm like, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hey! She put my hand on her breast. Two seconds, I realized what's happening. In the panic, I took her hand and put on my chest. And I said, oh, no, not there. <laughs> I held her hand. And I said, all will be well. All will be well. She's sweating now. The plane is still going crazy. Until the, the breathing, uh, the air fell. She is in the panic mode. She feels like it's over. I'm calm. I'm looking in the aisle to see Oh, I'm going to jump out to preach my last sermon. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! In season and out of season, it's time to give the last message. I will tell them, we are crushing right now in 45 seconds. You have 10 minutes, 10 seconds to receive Jesus Christ. Everybody will, I will have the biggest church that day in the <laughs> Hallelujah! I was calm, checking the aisle. I say, all will be well. Nothing will happen. Cool down, mama. Cool down. Cool down. Everybody's panicking. When everything cooled down, she, I removed my hand from her hand because I was holding her hand. And then she didn't speak, all right, for 10 minutes. Calm. And then after, gently she turned to me. Uh, who are you? <laughs> I said... Nothing will happen. He said, how do you know? I said, because I'm in the plane. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's what Paul said. Nothing will happen to you and anybody who's in your plane, in your boat, in your family, in your household, in your church, in your... Ah! Nothing can happen. I told her I have a meeting in Calgary at Cross Point. I got to preach this Sunday so I cannot die. And because I'm here, this plane cannot crash. So mama, sit down, chill out, I am by you now. Are you hearing me? Tell your neighbor we will make it on the other side. Because I am in the boat with you. I am in the boat with you. And the Sakata. Years ago, I worked for a company called Only Components. They make a lot of money. If I only knew what I know today, I think I will make some good money too. But I made my boss rich, and I was just happy to get peanuts. I was like Esau. I signed the contract with a hungry belly. And then I'm making him money every day. And then my contract gave me a little bit. And I cannot break this contract. It's five years. And one day, I told him, George, the day I leave this company, it's going down. Yeah. <laughs> he laughed. And, and then he will make fun of me and speak in tongues. F fake tongue. He <laughs> said, hallelujah. Ha, ya, ya, ya. Listen, you need to understand because of you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I will say it because some of you don't understand who you are. So you don't get it. Because of you. Because you're a part of this project, you will make it on the other side. Because you're a part of this ministry, we will make it on the other side. Because of you, God honors you and they have put grace upon you that your company is blessed because of you. That's why I told this mama in the plane, I said, don't worry, as long as I'm here, you're safe. Finally, we end up talking, I say, I'm a pastor. And then you come to Vegas? I say, I say, yeah. <laughs> I come to do have a job. Listen, she become a baby. 
sometimes turbulences are very good to establish the proper order. <laughs> no, you didn't get it. Because as long as there's no turbulences, she thinks she has a higher rank than me because she has money. When the turbulences come, God reestablished the proper order. She is under my rank. Yeah. Hallelujah. But as long as there is no turbulence, she thinks she is above me. But when the challenges of life come, God uses it to realign proper order. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. That storm can wreck your boat, but won't wreck your life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Don't worry, we're making it. We're making it. We are making it. Let me wrap up this thing quickly. In verse 22 it said, Yet now I urge you to keep up courage. There will be no loss of life, but only of the sheep. What have you lost? Your marriage wrecked out? Business wrecked out, project wrecked out, job wrecked out. God said, it might be wrecked out, but because you make it, it's not over yet. I will close with this. When tough come to tough, I like it, he said, let the swimmer jump out first. Hiya. Swimmers. The swimmer feel like, oh, praise the Lord. I obey my mom to go to YMCA when I was seven years old. You know what it means? It means God has given you skills before the storm through your experiences of life. And in the storm, they will begin to profit you. Because you don't become a swimmer in the storm. <laughs> you were a swimmer in the swimming pool first when there was no storm. Some of us, God is still training us in the swimming pool here for the tomorrow storm. And some of us are in the storm swimming because of the training of yesterday that we did not neglect it. The reason you didn't lose your head through this turmoil is because of your past swimming skills. Am I speaking to some swimmers? I'm talking to some swimmers. Where your investment of yesterday become profitable in the midst of the chaos. Or the midst of the chaos, your investment of yesterday become profitable. When other people are holding back, they cannot dare to jump in the water. Because they have not have been acquainted yet with the water. They don't have the skill to navigate the water. But here you are, you jump in the water. Because you are a swimmer. Church of God, we are swimmers. No matter what you are confronting today... You are a swimmer. I give you permission by the Spirit of God. Jump out of it and begin to swim. Begin to swim. It doesn't matter if you're crawling or you're brassing or you're going on your back. Baby, let me tell you, I will make it on the other side. Even if I'm going to swim like a dog. <laughs> I'm not a swimmer. One day we went, my wife and I, to jump to a pool. This pool was very, very deep. It was at uh, Elbow Fall in the days of craziness and folly. <laughs> and we feel like we're going to jump. And we held our hands. Can you imagine two weight now going down? And we jump. How many feet? And I'm not a swimmer. And I was thinking, God will will for me. All right? I am a man of faith. Listen to me. There are certain things faith won't give you. <laughs> Only what you've been trained for before. Do you understand? Only what you have added value to yourself before that will help you now to navigate in the turmoil of today. It's not a faith matter. And then I jump in, oh, rabos. You know what? We went so deep, and I can't breathe much underwater. So after a little bit, I feel like this has been a long time here. I might have been on the top surface already. No, no, no. I was still in the middle. The, ah, the panic come. I begin to do like the dog. My wife has already swam out. And then she's looking. She doesn't see me coming out. And finally I come out. She jumped back in the water. Thank God. Listen to me. Even if you don't know how to swim, 
Your neighbor is a swimmer. You will still make it on the other side. Hold my back. We are going. Somebody begin to swim. Carry me along. My wife carried me along. Woof, woof, woof. And I was in the back there. Rabo shakata. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my wife. I must begin to somebody. You may know to swim or not. As long as I'm connected with a swimmer, I know I will make it on the other side. Somebody shout, hold my back. I'm going to carry you there. Come on, say, hold my back. I'm going to carry you there. You can do your fancy thing. Me, I don't care. I'm just going to go like this. But it will still carry me out there. I must bring to some swimmers. How many swimmers do I have in the house today? Stand up on your feet. Give some brass and some coal. Prophetically speaking, you are swimming out of that storm. You are swimming out of that struggle. You are swimming out of that storm. You are swimming out of it. Swim 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 out of it. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout, I will make it. Mandalakata badosi kalabaya. If I cannot swim, I'm going to hold your back. Hold somebody's back. Tell them, take me on the other side. Begin to swim. Begin to swim. Take them on the other side. 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 Bend the I am making it on the other side. You may have a said. And for you who don't know how to swim, he said, Eden the wreckage. Eden the wreckage. Eden the wreckage become useful. Eden the wreckage become useful. Eden that broken situation will become useful. Eden that broken adventure, it will become useful. Hallelujah. Nothing is wasted. What you've gone through that was wrecked will still become useful. To help you make it on the other side. I don't need the full boat. I just need a piece of the boat. I just need one wreckage. Take me along with you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't be disappointed with God. And don't be disappointed with yourself. Storms are for life. Storms are in God's plans. Storms are the assurance and the evidence sometimes that we are heading in the right direction. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I say hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Put my last verse in 28. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 28, 11. Can we read this together, church? Stand up and let's read this together and we close. One, two, three. Let's go. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that has wintered in Holland. It was the Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods, Castor and Pollux. Now, are you ready? Are you ready? What's next for me is my next chapter. In chapter 27, I lost my boat. In chapter 28, I got a bigger one. The Alexandrian boat was the most powerful boat in the sea. The reason you might have lost your boat is because as long as you have not lost your boat, as long as you are still keeping to your old boat, you will have never encountered the Alexandrian. So I'm prophesying to you, the reason you lost what you lost is because God has something bigger for you. There is another boat. There is another business. There is another man. There is another woman. There is another project. There is another adventure. Somebody shout, I got a new boat. May peace come on you. No matter the lost, there is an Alexandrian boat. As long as you didn't lose it, you will never find this. So it was good for you to lose what you lost. Maramando Katalamandaya. It was good for you to lose what you lost. So you can encounter what you could have never seen as long as you still keep up to the old things. Tell your neighbor, I lost it, but I'm happy I did 
Because the Alexandrian boat is now my portion. Something better, something greater, something higher. That's my rank. That's my rank. Somebody give a shout to the Lord. Hold hand and let me pray for you. Aaron, you can come right away here on the stage. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have taken us as a church, a family, and individuals into storms. We have faced strong adversities. But we did not despair or lose hope. Your word said, take courage. It will be well. We will make it all to the other side safely. Yeah, no matter what we lost in the storms. No matter those who give up on us in the storms. No matter those who abandon us. No matter what we've lost, joy, peace, money, wealth, trust. No matter what we've lost, people, friendship, relationship, we are comforted as we are making on the other side. By swimming, by floating, whatever it might be, we know there is another boat. There is a greater boat. There is another project. There is another opportunity. There is another business. There is another relationship. There is another way to take us to our destination. As Paul made it to Rome, we will make it to Rome. Father, I release strength upon your people. Those who swim, swim. Those who cannot swim, Father, you gave them wreckage. And if they don't have a wreckage, they have somebody they can hold on to take them on the other side. And if everything else is taken away, Lord, you are giving them an opportunity to walk on water like Peter. In any way, in any form, we will make it. Cross Point will make it. The families of Cross Point will make it. The children of Cross Point will make it. The marriages of Cross Point will make it. The relationship of Cross Point will make it. The finances of the families will make it. The health will make it. In the name of Jesus, let be your portion on this Sunday, a new day, a new season for greater things. In Jesus' name, somebody shout hallelujah. Let's keep standing and worship. Who passed around for one minute? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go live now, I think so. Someone 
someone today. God will bless 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 someone today. Come on, it may be you, it may be me, it may be someone by your side. It may be you, it may be me, it may be someone. Maybe you, it may be you, it may be me. It may be someone by your side. It may be you, it may be me, it may be someone. on the CD, of course. Okay, just a quick announcement, we're gonna go dance.
The worship team will be performing at Olympic Plaza Tuesday, this Tuesday, from 1 p.m. to 2. Olympic Plaza downtown, 1 p.m. to 2 at the conference. So please, let's go. Those who are free, those who do not work during that time or during your lunch, 1 to 2, Olympic Plaza, let's go support our people. Number two, for the Port Bless, we want every nation. This church is a church of nation, amen? Let's have some Nigerian food, some Vietnamese food, some Spanish food, some Chinese food, some Burundian food. I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> Please, table will be out there. Put your name on, bring a dish from your own land and let people taste it. Ireland, Jamaica, Trinidad. Let the